So Ben Cormack here again, and we are going to talk today about the concept of neutral spine and back pain. If you go on YouTube, search the internet, a very, very common theme is of this idea that we shouldn't really bend our back very much or we shouldn't really bend it under load. Um, and if we do, um, this can really contribute to the development of back pain. Now, from my personal opinion, this is a load of rubbish. Now, we know that back pain is a multifactorial thing. Um, there are lifestyle influences, comorbidity, um, health, uh, genetics, all of these different factors play into back pain. So to blame one movement or one action for causing this problem is really quite ridiculous given how much research that we have. So we have to consider it in the big body of evidence and that kind of makes not a bunch of sense, certainly to me. Now, if we look at it from an evolutionary perspective, now we could say evolution is not perfect. We know that. But if the spine was not meant to bend, would it look like your femur? Would it look like your humerus? A straight bone. You know, the power of the spine is, is it has all of this articulation. It allows us to be very functional, to pick things up, um, to move things about, to carry things. You know, we can pick up small objects, big objects, wide objects, heavy objects, light objects, because we have this articulation. Now, the spine is an amazing piece of kind of genetic evolutionary development. Um, is it perfect? Absolutely not. Can you bend your elbow and get pain? Of course. Can you bend your knee and get pain? And we don't suggest that these things um, are, you know, not meant to bend or designed in the wrong way. So in fact, these, um, the design of the discs and the vertebrae and how the nerves work with that, maybe we should see this as a powerful design, not some kind of flaw that we need to kind of fix or avoid these type of things. In fact, you know, there's quite a lot of research out there, um, not perfect research because it's quite difficult to do, that, you know, people that are more active, people that do um, more vigorous activity, people that run more or, or, you know, the various other kind of physical activities actually have less pain. And when we study their discs um, on things like MRI, actually they appear healthier. So things like the signal and the height of the disc, the kind of proxies that they use for health on MRI um, studies. And actually sometimes it might be disuse um, that affects uh, some of our more passive uh, tissues, you know, things like cartilage and discs, etc. Um, but one of the things that may influence them the most is actually things like our genetics and our lifestyle and health. We know that smoking has a large effect on disc degeneration. We know that genetics play quite a large role in disc degeneration. We know things like BMI have been associated with disc degeneration and disc herniation. And in fact, things like lifting. Um, there was a great study in 2018 from Shuri that actually found that lifting was protective of flare-ups of the back pain. It minimised the risk um, quite dramatically. So this idea of, you know, trying to keep this neutral spine, not to bend it too much, not to move it too much, for me, makes no sense. If I move my body, generally it tends to get stronger, not weaker and wear out. That's the difference between a biological organism and a mechanical object. Imagine if you were a car and you drove around and it was biological, what would actually happen is the wheels would get bigger in the same way your biceps get bigger. Um, but it doesn't. It's a mechanical object and it wears out and you need to replace the tyres and you need to replace various bits and pieces because they are mechanical. Human beings are biological. They adapt. 
as we load them, they get bigger and stronger to some degree. Some tissues do more, some tissues do less. There could be a point of things like our discs are not even affected that much by how much we use our bodies and we load them. Um, I think that's a very, very plausible possibility given the current state of the research. But that single factor thinking at its finest the health of the organism and the state of the organism is multifactorial, as we know back pain is. The idea that we could even keep our spine neutral is fairly ridiculous because of, you know, we move and we bend and we twist and we rotate and those biomechanics happen whether we want them to or not. Again, biomechanical research tells us that. From an evolutionary perspective, you know, um, it would look like your femur or your humerus rather than this multi-articulate structure. Um, and, you know, just think about this. If we had to worry and focus all of our time keeping our spine neutral, what kind of life would that be? Um, back pain, unfortunately, is common. Um, you know, we bend and we get pain because we bend. <laughs> and the more we bend, the more we are going to have a risk of problems from bending. Not because the structure is weak, but if the more I play football, I am more likely to get a football-related injury. The more I run, the more I am likely to get a running-related injury. It's not the weakness of the structure. It's more that the more we expose ourselves to any action, adverse events associated with that action are more likely to occur. It's not abnormal. It's not a design fault. It's not a flaw in the system. You haven't got a finite number of bends. Use your body. Enjoy your body. And make sure that you are not getting taken up by this fear, this simple explanation that people use to explain a complex phenomenon. Neutral spine, it's a no from me.